and see if we can get this stream going, live stream. Let's see how we're doing here. Lighting looks good. Excellent. Okay, we've got some viewers. Thanks for tuning in with me. All right, well, we'll give a few, a few more minutes for everyone to uh, log in, gather your supplies. So you can see a few of my supplies uh, in the in the shot. So I've got a few brushes there. I've got a, a black Sharpie or a black fine tip pen. Either of those will work. Of course, I have my watercolor paints. All right, we've got some comments coming in. Excellent. We've got uh, hello to Catherine. Hello to Ruth in Puerto Rico. Awesome. Yeah, if you want to jump in the comments and uh, tell me where you're from, that's exciting. Hello to Diane. Hello to Sue. All right, so this, this is my first live video on Facebook Live. Of course, I've done a lot of Zoom events, so that's not uh, too dissimilar to Facebook Live. It is 7 o'clock. I will just kind of wait a couple more minutes, see if we can't get some more people tuned in, and then I will go over, uh, I'll go over everything. Everything. And uh, yeah, still time to grab yourself a drink or a snack. So I've got a, oh, a glass of white wine here. Grab yourself a glass of water. Let's see. All right, we've got quite a few people tuned in. That's awesome. 701. We'll go ahead and get started. Um, so, well, you can't really see me. I'm off camera, um, but that's just uh, how we're going to do it today because we need a nice overhead view. My name is Kristen, but you can call me Chris. Everyone does. And uh, I am in London, Ontario, in Canada. And let me know uh, in the comments where you guys are from. I won't be able to read every comment, but uh, we'll see how many I can absorb. Hello to Indra. Hello. Bernice, hello to Gisela, thanks for joining me today. NB, I'm going to go with Nebraska, NB, could be New Brunswick in Canada, NB. All right, uh, yes, this video will be available after the live broadcast, and it will be up there forever. So if you do fall behind a little bit, you will be able to rewatch the video. On our Facebook page. All right, so uh, I said my name is Chris. I'm from London, Ontario. Let's look at the painting that we're going to do. It's right here. Um, I've titled it Remembrance Poppies, very simply. Um, of course, the theme is Remembrance Day. So in Canada, that is uh, on Wednesday, the 11th. And uh, I believe, yeah, I believe the States has uh, Veterans Day, same day. Pretty sure. So yeah, this painting, I would like to dedicate that to all the men and women and their families uh, who are currently serving or have served in the past and uh, have sacrificed for our great country, Canada. Um, if there is any veterans tuned in right now watching, I want to say thank you. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much. Lots of hearts, lots of love to our veterans. All right, so um, let's look at the supplies that I have in front of me here. So I mentioned paint brushes, makes sense. Um, I've got a thin one and a medium. I would say that's medium. Um, if you're curious about the numbers on mine, mine is a zero and an eight. Uh, some paint brushes have numbers on them. I've got a zero and an eight. I've got a Sharpie or a fine tip black pen. Um, if you don't have either of those, you could use a black 
pencil crayon, my colored pencil, that would work. I've got my tube watercolor paints. So let's look at the colors that I have. I've got a red. Uh, my particular red is alizarin crimson. I've got an orange. Uh, cadmium yellow or lemon yellow. I believe, I believe I did this one in lemon yellow. A little bit brighter than cadmium. I've got a viridian or any kind of any kind of green, really, emerald, forest, um, maybe more of a shamrock, lighter green, that would work. I've got two colors of blue, but that's not, um, you know, completely necessary. If you just have one shade of blue, that would be all right, too. Um, mine are cerulean, and that's an ultramarine, so that one's a bit darker, that one's a bit lighter. And because I have the two watercolors, I squeezed out little bits of them onto my, this is what I use as a palette. Just a, an oblong plate. I've been using it for years. So you'll see other colors on here um, that I'm not going to use today, but they're just always present on my palette. Um, you might have something like this at home. That works excellent for watercolors because those little um, those little divots kind of hold the watery paint. So that's a good, a good palette to use. I just have always used this. So if you're using tubes, squirt a little bit of these colors out in preparation or maybe you're using like a, a a palette of cake watercolors so you've got all the colors already on that palette let's move some stuff out of the way um, another supply you need is watercolor paper you do need to have specifically watercolor paper um, because regular paper say like from your computer printer is um, going to warp and wiggle and not hold the paint like watercolor paper does. So I'll show you which uh, which paper I use um, at home. Uh, Canson brand watercolor paper. Um, I've got an 11 by 15, but you can definitely do this painting on a smaller scale, and then it'll be a little easier for you to do it a little bit smaller. Any size, it could be a square, it could be a rectangle work with what you have. All right, other supplies. Cup of water only makes sense for watercolor. Um, not to be confused with my drinking water. I'm sure there's quite a few artists out there who have accidentally drank their paint water or put their paintbrush in their drinking water. It happens to me, to the best of us. And then just a little piece, I've got a little piece of paper towel just to dry my brush. Okay, so I think I saw a fellow Londoner has tuned in. Excellent. Colorado, Texas, San Fran, Ottawa. Awesome. We're all over the continent. Um, I think that's all my supplies. I think I went over all those. Um, I've got a tablecloth down. Um, especially if you're doing like oils or acrylics, you definitely need a tablecloth, but watercolors are quite forgiving. So if you do get some on your furniture, it should just come off with water, maybe a little soap. But watercolor is quite, quite forgiving. Okay. Um, yes, acrylics can be used like watercolor. You might not get the exact same effect with how they dry, but I have done many an acrylic painting with a bit of watercolor technique involved. Bob's here with us too. Uh, Bob, I don't know if you guys know this, but uh, Bob Ross uh, was a veteran of the U.S. horses, so in a way we are kind of honoring him today too. So he's my little mascot, my little lucky charm, we're sure for him. Where are you going to go, Bob? Right there. Okay, so grab those supplies that I mentioned. We won't be using any pencil work in this one, we're just going to go for it. Okay, so we've got some comments on the volume. I can't I can like project a little more and enunciate a little more. <laughs> so some people can hear me just fine. Uh, maybe turn up the volume of your laptop or, or device just to scooch, but I can also enunciate a little better. Okay, um, so we've got my paper here. We need a brush, of course. I'm gonna use this size brush for my background. And then I'm gonna use my thin one for my stems and my finer details. But for most of the painting, I'll be using this size. Again, it's an eight. And we are gonna do the background, pardon me, Bob. The background first, of course. 
and then layer the flowers and stems and leaves on top. And before we actually hit the paper with our paint, I want to go over um, just a little teeny bit of uh, terminology. The most prominent one would be, I'll often refer to the transparency level. Transparency level. So here's an example of what I mean by the transparency level. These are examples of level one transparency level versus a medium of a three versus a very thick and dark, opaque transparency of a five. So uh, for the background, we want a nice light one or two transparency with our blues and yellows and greens. And then for our petals, because we're layering the petals on top of the background, um, we're going to do a five. Four, five. Okay, we've got a question about the canvas. So yeah, you can use a canvas. Yep. Lay it flat. Lay it flat. Um, yeah, so when I refer to the transparency level, this is what I mean. One is the lightest, five is the darkest. We'll set that there. We can reference that as we go to. Now we're going to get water and paint involved. So my background here is a mixture of blues, greens, yellows, all kind of melded into one. There's weird little puddles and weird shapes as it dries. And that's part of the beauty of watercolor. You don't really know what's going to happen as it dries because it could give you more texture as it dries. I'm going to start light to dark. So I'm going to start with yellow. So I've got um, lemon yellow and I've got cadmium yellow. Let's get some water. I'm going to go with lemon. And that's bright. So if uh, your paints are like mine, have been sitting out in the air and drying, they're quite hard. We need to add water to it, and I'm going to add quite a bit of water because we want the transparency level to be quite see-through, quite light, like a one or a two. There's a bunch of yellow there. Set that down. Uh, so in mine, my yellows are kind of here, but really you can put any color anywhere, anywhere you feel like it. And I just kind of squidge it on there. Not really a rhyme or reason. And then sometimes I just I dip right into my water and then I just throw a bunch of water on there and let it kind of squidge around. And even if you are um, using watercolor paper, it, it might still kind of wiggle and warp a little bit, which can in turn also affect how your paint puddles and dries, so it might puddle a little more in a valley of the paper. And that's all part of it. Mistakes and watercolors go hand in hand. So there's a little kind of patch of yellow there. Let's get a patch. I kind of want to have some greens down here, maybe a bit of blue up here. Maybe that represents the sky. It could represent whatever. And you can do really any colors that you want to do if you want to have the whole background being purple, pinks. That's okay too. So here I have a nice dark green and a little bit of my yellow. Bring that over. If you have a nice um, lime green, you can use that too. I'm just going to use my dark green and lighten it. Lots of water, lots of water. See how like liquidy? Mm. See it shaking around? Lots of water. Put it over here and just kind of slop it around. That's why I like using this like medium or even a bigger brush so that it holds a lot of painty water. I'll just kind of slop that around. Now here's my water cup, just straight water. Because we want a light, light transparency. We want to see the paper through the paint. Transparent. After we've got our whole uh, background filled in, we will need to take a little drying break uh, before we can do our, our poppies. So there's kind of a squidgy green. Now if you do want to go all the way to the edge, 
please do so. I just kind of keep it maybe about an inch or a couple centimeters in from the edge. That's just my choice, but you can go right to your edge if you wanted to. And look like that. Let's get another color of green involved. And so I'm just going to take some of that dark green I have up here and mix it into my current green puddle. So there's less yellow in this, a little bit darker. And squidge some of that around. You can put it right in amongst your other green. Some more water, just a ton more water. Sometimes I even leave little white gaps. It's okay to leave white gaps. It doesn't have to be 100% filled in. You guys make the decisions. I'm showing you how to do it, but you make all the decisions. Same with colors. Make the decisions on what colors. Can you get a little bit more yellow? More of that lemon yellow, you can dab some of that in there. Anything goes. Anything goes. You can get some blue involved here. Everything's very wet. We're working wet on wet here. Things will expand and spread. Um, but light, 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 light transparency here because we want our red on top. Um, so if you do have some areas that are very dark at this point, just grab water in your brush and just kind of mellow it out. Uh, oh, I said blue. Blue. So here is my uh, cerulean. So that's my ultramarine, two different colors of blue, so let's get a little of that going. Cerulean. Some people like to um, kind of wet each of the colors that they're going to use in the painting beforehand. I just like to wet them as I need them. There's some cerulean, and I'm going to kind of focus my blues up here, like in the example, but I can just put some wherever I want now. Anywhere. So I'm going to walk, this is quite dark here, I'm going to add a bunch of water. And it could even touch, if the blue is touching some of the yellow, and it'll bleed into it a little bit. That's uh, ideal, that is desired. So as I was setting up for uh, tonight's event, as I was setting up, my internet just crashed. And then we found out it was not just our house, it was the whole area. So I packed up everything and I am sitting at my mother-in-law's dining room table right now. Because <laughs> uh, she lives in uh, London as well and, and she had internet. But if I didn't tell you that, you wouldn't be able to tell that I'm not at home. So I've got a little green in my blue, I can dip into my yellow, put a little yellow into my blue, I can dip my blue into some green, any, just any color anywhere. Any color anywhere. Um, oh yeah, and I have, I have that ultramarine. Robin says micro pens, yes. Um, this, this pen I have is an ultra fine, so yeah. That one work. I often use a very, very fine pen. Just for this one, I decided to have bolder lines, so I went with a Sharpie. Um, so here's my Ultra. Ultra Marine. And I put a little bit of that in there. And you can see it spread out and 
dry and funky shapes. Okay, well, I'm glad I'm glad the volume uh, is good for the for the majority of us. Uh, do I want more? Yeah. So I, I was talking about how the paper, even though it is watercolor paper, mine is still having a little bit of a, a wobbly surface, and that is normal. Even my finished painting, when it's fully dry, it has a little little curve to it. Very normal. And this uh, kind of blue area, that's kind of a valley. So that's why it's kind of puddling right there. Right? All right, so I kind of like that. Oh, that's turned out very light. And I'm just putting a little water around my edges. Like that. Uh, don't want any, anything else. I'm happy with that. So yeah, there are some white gaps. There's places that are a little lighter, a little darker. There's puddles. We do need it to dry, which is a little bit of the drag of watercolor. Oops, a little bit of a, sometimes I like to lift it up, kind of undo the valley. And you can see it kind of spreading sometimes too. So we will have to wait a few minutes, um, but if you've done a nice thin layer of water, it should dry pretty evenly, pretty quickly. Um, I guess I could fan it a little bit. Um, so like if you're doing an acrylic painting, fanning is quite helpful to help it dry, but with watercolor, it's more about the Paper is absorbing the water itself, not so much about evaporation, but uh, fanning, fanning does help a little bit. So might as well do a little fanning if you have, um, you know, postcard nearby or book, magazine. But it's more about the paper absorbing. So patience, patience. Oh, very nice and light. Um, there's some fun things happening here. Let me see if I can show you like these like crackly, weird texture happening there. Some interesting shapes happening there on their own. That's all part of it. That's all part of it. Uh, Debbie's asking about mixed media paper. Hmm, I'm on the fence about that one. If it's the only thing you have, of course, uh, use your mixed media paper, but watercolor paper is uh, is ideal. Um, I suppose if I had to use mixed media paper, what I would do is I would um, tape, where's my tape? I would use like masking tape and tape the paper down to a flat board of some kind um, so that the paper doesn't wiggle and warp as much as um, you know, like computer paper. Um, so, yeah, taping it down at the edges might, might help that a little bit. That watercolor paper. And you could even do that for watercolor paper. If you want to have a nice, flat, tight piece of paper, you could, um, you could tape it down. Yeah, tape it down to, like, masonite or something. Yeah, canvas. I've definitely done watercolor paintings on canvas. Wine break. I'm excited to see um, if you guys have chosen alternative colors for your paintings and see how those turn out. And also, um, after you've done this painting, you could do it again in different colors, maybe uh, as a gift to somebody, and maybe choose their favorite colors. That would be a lovely gift for Christmas. So Bonnie asked, uh, follow this for later. Yes, so um, 
this Facebook Live video will be on our, our page, Artist Palette Durham Regions page, I believe forever. Uh, at first, we had our live videos just for maybe a couple months after the live broadcast, but I believe the new policy is they're up forever. So you can definitely watch this video tomorrow, the next day, next year. Okay, Angela's question. Is it not uh, as transparent as mine? Yes, yeah, so add more water. So, and you should do that while it's still wet and hasn't had a chance to dry. So the more water you add, the more see-through it will be. So these are kind of like a this transparency level, one and two, three and four and five, definitely too dark, more water. Kimberly has watercolors in a bottle. Yeah, you can definitely get liquid watercolors. Um, kind of reminds me of ink. Thank you, Liesl, for your encouragement. Yeah, I'm uh, very, very proud to be the newest member of Artist Palette Durham Region. So, so glad you took me on. Okay. Almost there. I think I'm about mm, maybe like 90% dry. It's absorbing. It's um, getting a little more flat. It's kind of relaxing a little bit so it's not as wibbly wobbly. Where's my little fan gone? I'm going to use this one. Angela says, one of my favorite mediums. Uh, B asked if it could be done with acrylic. Um, yeah, yeah, you could definitely do a version of this with acrylic. Really water it down. Really water it down. And then uh, let it dry. And yeah, it'd be easy to do the poppies in acrylic because acrylic's so opaque. So it would cover up the background very nicely. <laughs> Catherine says, thanks for going to your mother-in-law's. Yeah, it's just so weird that, like, my neighborhood uh, didn't have internet since, like, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. And so I'm like, okay, four hours for them to get their internet back on. And it was, like, half an hour till start. And I'm like, let's pack it up. Let's go to the mother-in-law's. Very interesting. Uh, while we're waiting for this to dry a few more minutes, let me tell you about, we have a new Facebook group through Artist Palette Durham Region. Um, it's called Watercolor Lovers. So if you are interested in learning um, some more little tips and tricks and little fundamental skills, then Watercolor Lovers Facebook group is the place for you. So you'll see lots of little videos from myself and and uh, Lisa and Vera too just with little um, you know fundamental skills so we learn about precision we learn about the transparencies that I'm talking about and then just fun free projects to do at home as well in your own time so if you are interested please uh, search up watercolor lovers artist palette germ region and there is one I think one membership question you need to answer, but it's real easy. We made it real easy for you to uh, gain access to our group. <laughs> All right, Celine says, don't have the same blue. Prussian's a good one. Cobalt, yep. Phthalo, love all of those blues. Use any number of those blues in the background. Use them all. Patty asked if she can watch a replay. Of course, Patty. It will be, uh, you know, almost immediately posted on our Facebook page for all time. <laughs> um, what else can we talk about? Oh, we're like 99% dry. It's 
wanted a little scooch dryer. Um, so at this point, if you're looking at your page and you see very large puddles of water anywhere, what I like to do to kind of speed that up a little bit, I take my clean paper towel or a Kleenex a tissue and I just blot. So here's a little dampness. You can just literally touch the corner of it to any really deep puddles and that'll just suck it right up. Um, I don't have any really big puddles, but yeah, look at your painting. Look at an angle. You'll see shininess. Um, that's pretty good. So if you do have little puddles, just soak them up a tiny bit with your tissue or paper towel. That'll help. Okay, Purnima says, uh, recommend hot press. So um, this is cold press paper, and that is the most recommended for watercolor, cold press. Hot press, I would use that for um, like an, a lovely pencil drawing. Um, you could use that for maybe some pastels, something that requires a nice smooth surface. So watercolor paper has a bit of a bumpy texture. It's almost um, kind of dimpled on a microscopic level, so it sucks the water in. Suzanne says wine break. I'm with you, Suzanne. Here we go. Okay, uh, is this better with the hard style or the liquid? I would say either, either. And then you've also got the tubes. The tubes are neither hard nor liquid. They're like a toothpaste, but they do get hard uh, over time. So. When I first squirt it onto my palette, it is like toothpaste, but then this has dried uh, overnight, so it is hard at this point. Purple, dark, dark purple. Okay, Melanie is not getting any sound, but Melanie can't hear me say that either. <laughs> I would say unmute. Unmute, if there's a mute. On your, on your computer. Mine's pretty dry, pretty dry. Uh, so I hope that the paper towel or tissue has helped you uh, get it into a more dry state. Cat hairs, cat hairs everywhere. Let's have a little looky at our uh, example before we get into it. Um, so my poppies, they're not, you know, 100% realistic. I'm not going for uh, a poppy that would go into like a botanical textbook here. They're very stylized. Um, and there's even, like there's parts where my outline doesn't match up with the petal that I painted. It's got a kind of a contemporary feel to it. And we've got some reds in there, some orange in there. Um, and then we'll do the leaves after that. So the leaves are uh, quite spiky. They're not, uh, they're not necessarily compound leaves, but uh, there's definitely lots of texture on the edges of the leaves. And, um, and these great bulb looking things, that's the seed head of the poppy. That's where poppy seeds come from for like your bagels, right? Poppy seed bagel comes from a poppy. Yeah, so as the flowers get fertilized, the petals die and fall off, and then the little ovary, I guess, the ovary of the plant kind of swells up and grows into these big bulbous seed heads. A little something about poppies there. Um, so in, in my depiction, the poppies have about four-ish petals each. Um, but I just was reminded of like a poppy that we wear usually has four petals. Um, but you can make yours as petally as you like. Because I'm pretty sure there's more than four petals on a, on a, on a poppy. So if you, if you want to do more petals than, than I do, absolutely. You can make it more um, authentic looking. 
Uh, let that down. There's just splashes too. A lot of my pieces, I just have fun with a little bit of splashing at the end. That's why it's good to have a uh, tablecloth. Tablecloth, okay. Yes. Dry. Dry, dry, dry. Um, so I'm going to be using this uh, biggish, mediumish, mediumish one. Uh, again, that's the eight, and then I'll use my thin one for my leaves and stems. So I'm going to stick with this guy for my petals. But if you maybe are working on a smaller page and your poppies are going to be smaller than mine, you can definitely use a smaller brush. So again, these petals are a darker, thicker transparency so we're going for the five maybe a bit of four but really thick we want to be covering any colors we've done uh, in the background it's okay if a little is showing through too so think thick paint um, it will it'll never be the thickness of acrylics so we are going to get a little bit of see-throughness Catherine likes my voice how nice how nice. I watch a lot of Bob Ross, so I kind of try to emulate him a little bit. <laughs> okay, so uh, here was my greens and blues. I kind of keep my colors organized, cool, warm. Red is on this side. Let's rejuvenate my reds. So my particular red is Alizarin Crimson. Um, but any red will work, cadmium. Maybe someone out there has a color called poppy red. Could be. Could be. Got a nice little puddle of red going. Now to make my um, paint more opaque, so I've got this kind of runny puddle here. I just need to add more pigment, more and more pigment. So I'm not going to add more water to this puddle. I'm just going to keep rubbing my dry little clumpy, this dry clumpy. I'm just going to keep rubbing it. So this puddle is becoming more dense with the pigment itself. If you're using liquid watercolor, you could probably even try using it straight out of a bottle and see what that looks like. Uh, can you use a hairdryer? Of course, yeah, a hairdryer. Maybe you have like a like a paper fan that could do some fanning action. That would work. Okay, so I've got lots of nice rich red right here. Now bear with me a second. I do want to get my orange ready to go too. So here's orange. I think I want to set this down. Set that down so that I have my orange puddle over here. Now I say orange, but in truth, this is actually cadmium, cadmium red pale hue. So it's it's not true orange, but looks exactly like orange. Okay. Got a nice puddle of orange, a nice puddle of red, very pigmented, not too see-through. All right, so let's. Um, so of course you don't have to do the poppies in exactly exactly the same place that I do. All right, you make the decisions. This is your world. All right, so I've got orange on my brush. Might as well use it. Um, so the petals are not. Um, you know, perfectly shaped petals. They're lumpy. They don't match each other. And they all kind of come from the middle. So that is, that's mostly orange there. I've got a little red in here. I'll just kind of tap it in there. And I'm going to go back and forth between reds and oranges throughout. And they will spread and blend and do whatever they want. So here's kind of the middle of my poppy. Here's another petal. It kind of makes the outer edge a little jagged looking. 
If you want your poppies more uniform, you can absolutely do that. Let's get a little bit of orange. We'll tap a little orange in there. That'll spread and do fun stuff. Just have fun creating different shapes. Adair's cat is trying to drink the paint water. If I was at home, my three cats would be successfully drinking the paint water. There's another petal. They can overlap a little too. See, it's not a perfect depiction of a flower, just the impression, impression of a flower. Quite thick and dark. And yeah, you'll see fun things happening as it dries. You might have like a more intense little section of orange. Now this one dried a little bit lighter than say this one. Yeah. Random. Okay, so I've got some red in my brush here. Um, so I've got kind of three poppies that are facing you, you know, but that's not realistic to have every flower facing us. So there are one, two, three, four, five facing kind of at an angle. So um, I picture it like, so this is a poppy. This one's like this, but say like this one is like facing that way. And then this one's facing like down. So that's why that one looks like that. That one's facing like, like that way. So you can see a little of the middle. Yeah, because we don't want every single one facing right at us. Let's get another one going. So I'm gonna put this guy up here. They can absolutely like overlap. So that works. Okay, let's do uh, shape here. Just work with work with the size of your paper. So if you have a smaller paper than mine, maybe you won't do three big ones and five like other ones. Maybe you'll do um, just two big ones and then uh, three small ones. Okay, so this one I'm going to kind of go like this so they're not really touching. It's okay to have white gaps between two sections of color. That's okay in watercolor. There's another kind of funky shape leaf. Sorry, leaf petal. Petal. Hello to Portland, Oregon. Red, a little bit of orange. See, again, not a perfect shape. Any shape. I'll let that dry. Things are flowing into each other too. And it's alright if, if these two touch. That's fine. They're the same color. It will be okay. Let's move on. Nice and bright. Let's get some more. I'm gonna build up my puddle again. So 
So uh, the middle of poppies are generally black, and we're going to achieve that today with our Sharpie. But uh, you could also do the middles of your poppies in black watercolor paint, but you'd need to let these dry. You need to let those dry if you do want to do the middle black with paint. Okay, so we will do some of these little, um, you know, facing in different directions poppies. Half a poppy. Half a poppy. And I'm probably not going to do them in the exact same positions I did here, but if you want to follow that exact composition, please go ahead. And let's do, I kind of want to do a bigger one here. Um, yeah, so it's kind of like a crescent shape here with some lumpy blobs that are the petals. We will turn that into a poppy that looks like that. Karen asked, should she soften the hard lines? Um, do you mean the hard lines of the poppy petals? Mine are quite crisp. My edges are quite crisp. If that's what you mean about the hard lines. Let's do another kind of half C. Um, this one, I like this one because he's kind of going down. So that's that's unique. Let's have one going down as well. Any blobby, any blobby shape I want. Get some orange in there. Get some red in there. Let's be facing down like. Um, like a bluebell or like Lily of the Valley, they kind of go down. Oh, gouache. Yeah, gouache is kind of a between stage between acrylic and uh, watercolor. Kind of that middle ground. So you can kind of use it like either type. Um, I'm going to do a little bitty one here. They don't all have to be the same size here, little bitty ones. Have to think about, um, you know, the space you have on your page. Let me make this a little bigger. Think about composition. Mm -hmm. One or two more. One or two more. I think I'll do one more. Yeah, I think I like that. I like that a lot. Uh, Denise asks, does it have to be 100% dry? I would say yes for the background, um, because if you put some of this wet red on any wet background, you will get spreading, bleeding kind of stuff. Um, but, but what I said earlier was take a little corner of a clean, dry paper towel and you can touch, touch it to any wet bits of the background to kind of soak it up a little and help it out. Robin uses an old washcloth. Very good. Very, um, very green of you, Robin. Do I ever blow dry the paper? Not me personally. I just let the layers uh, dry in real time. <laughs> and then, you know, you can go fold some laundry while the background dries and then load the dishwasher while, while these dry kind of thing. All right, so we've got our, our poppies established. Um, just have a look at, at your composition. Um, if you're looking at it and it seems like lopsided, more flowers here than over here, throw maybe a little one to balance it out. Um, sometimes I like to hold my painting far away from me, like arm's length, and then you just kind of see your, your own composition a little 
little differently than, you know, you're like six inches away at arm's length, it looks different. So, or even get up, walk away, look at it from afar. Alright, so that's it for the for the red for now. Let's do a little bit of greens, the greenery. Um, these, what are they called? Oh, seed heads. I was going to say bud, but no, it's not a bud. Seed heads. After it's been fertilized. There's a seed head. So um, mine's kind of like a darker green. So I've got that uh, same Viridian green that I used before. Get some of that going. It's dried up in the meantime. Nice dark green. Um, so I'm going to do the the bulbous part of the seed head first, and then we'll do the stems and leaves after that. Dark green or light green, medium green. I might throw a little yellow in here. A little, I'll put a little yellow in my green just to soften it a little bit. And these um, seed heads can go anywhere which can also help balance out your composition. So, um, yeah, so I've got one, one, two, three, I've got a triangle. Three is a nice number to have. So this one is aiming like that way, top left, so like a round shape. And then it has this kind of little lip opening thing. So the stem will come out the this back end here. This little shape. It's like a there's like little holes to disperse the seeds. Um, if I were to call that a shape, I would say the shape of an of an urn, or like the shape of a goldfish cracker. <laughs> you know, goldfish crackers. You know what I mean. We've all had goldfish crackers. Okay, so then this guy is um, aiming like down. I think as they get bigger, they get heavier, and then would we'll start to droop over. So you'll see a lot of the big heavy ones drooped, drooped over. That's a green, and then that little lip shape. Thing. They don't have to be the exact same shape. Not, not focused on that. And then there's one way down here. Um, do I want it here? Do I want it here? Because you can move anything you want anywhere. I'm putting it here because I can. It's my world. This guy's really hanging down. There we go, green. Uh, let's see, I do want to have like a little bit of a different tone in it. So these are all still wet, still very wet. I might just tap a little, if I just, there it is, put it in my brush, touch a little blue. And then you can literally just touch it, touch it to the wet. And a little of that blue will go in there and bleed and make a fun texture. Just something different. A little blue. Barely touching. Wet on wet. So we'll, we'll see how that looks like when it dries. Wait, this one. Bulbous. Seed heads. Okay, Annette asks. Yep. Yeah. Um, so these brushes, they could be used for watercolor, acrylic. I definitely go back and forth between all my brushes. I even have dollar store brushes. Yeah, you don't need um, fancy brushes that are watercolor specific. So 
So Claire's using 90 pound paper. Yep, it is thinner, it gets wrinklier. Yep, books on it will flatten it out. Yep. Um, yeah, I have some really terrible watercolor paper at home and I'll use that for like practice. And it really wrinkles up. So um, I like this kind. I have Canson brand. It's a nice, like medium, medium quality, medium price. Good enough for me. All right, our reds are drying nicely. Crack the old knuckles. Um, we are going to put some leaves in here. And as we do the leaves, we just need to be careful not to touch the wet red and orange. If it does touch a little bit, that's okay. Let it do its thing. It will bleed, but that's all part of it, right? Sometimes the little mistakes and the little bleeds are they're going to work in your favor and make it look really interesting. All right, so these leaves are kind of lighter green than what I was using here. Um, I'm going to use my thinner brush. Yeah, so uh, this one's a zero, um, nice and thin, so I can get some nice jagged kind of edges on my leaves. But a lot of this jaggedness that you see is my marker work after the fact. So underneath there, if your leaves aren't as jagged, you can just fudge the jaggedness with your black, black lines after. There you go. Um, so here's some green. We got to get some yellow involved to make it lighter. Lighter green than I was using before. Like a like a lime color. Just lighter. Maybe not lighter so much as brighter, because lighter could just imply adding more. I'm brightening it with yellow. Make a nice puddle. A puddle. Oh, I got some little splashes here. Tissue to the rescue. A wild splashing. But we are going to make splashes on here after, so that's okay. Okay, let's start with a leaf that um, kind of is on its own, not touching any flowers here. I like to do kind of the, the middle, um, would you call that the spine of the leaf? Like the, the bit that runs up the middle, the spine. And it can be a little bit curvy. Um, it doesn't really end in any particular fancy way, it just kind of ends. Nothing fancy about that. And then just kind of make it jagged like, um, I don't know, like you're drawing an upside down Christmas tree, maybe? Like that. So I kind of outline it and then I'll fill it in. And it doesn't have to be doesn't have to be symmetrical on both sides. Don't even worry about that. And then with more paint, I just kind of fill in my outline I made. Glossy. Brush to one end. It's like a little bit narrower at the top, a little wider at the bottom, but it's not a hard and fast rule. Okay, let's do another one kind of down here. Just an angle. Let's do kind of like this. And do the same kind of jagged. If you're doing that. Upside down Christmas tree. You could, even, you could even spin it. Spin your page to be more comfortable if you're more comfortable going like this and then literally making it like a Christmas tree. Nothing. You can turn it to your advantage. Cool. Let's 
There we go. Okay, so while these are still wet, I do want a little bit of a tone difference in them. So I'm gonna dip into some yellow, medium yellow. I'm gonna literally just kind of tap it, tap some wet yellow anywhere I want. And it'll bleed, it'll spread out and do whatever it wants as it dries. As you can see over here, there's a little bit kind of lighter, a little darker. You could just put some yellow near the tip and not at the base or down the middle. And oh, so here's some more yellow. Maybe on this one I only do a little bit near the tip. Up here. I just touched the wet yellow onto the wet green right there. We'll see how that dries. Awesomely is my prediction. And then let's look, look at this guy. He's quite light colored. So I've got lots of yellow here on my brush. Let's grab more yellow, tiny head of green. Let's do one over here like that. So I'm going to go like this. So just working with whatever composition you have. If you have more of a gap for a leaf up higher or lower, put it there. And then, oh, this guy's kind of, this one really did spikies on one side. So maybe he's kind of at an angle to us. Why not? They don't all have to be facing us. You know, dead on. Oh, I got a little drippy there. Paper towel to the rescue. A little drippy there, so I just touched it with the paper towel. There we go, so that guy's kind of a side angle. I like that. I want to do another one like that. I want another. Let's go. We do have to get some kind of sneaking in here too. Let's go right in here. And again, just be very careful near the wet red. Carefully, um, so I do want to do another kind of half C. Give it a cool, cool look. Any color green here, this I've got a bit of a lighter color on my brush, but I can also dip it and touch the, the darker to it. And see it kind of spread upward. Um, sneak one in here. Anywhere you like. Not touching the reds. Go right up next to it and stop. And like the the spines of my leaves aren't straight. All of them so far have a little curve. Just adds a little interest. What else? One, two, three, four, five, six, six. In this one, I have six, um, but of course, we don't have to just stick with that number. Um, let's make one. Ooh, what if I have one that that is droopy? Let's have a droopy one. He's seen some things. Maybe uh, something snapped it, and it's droopy. Tammy says uh, that they're going to do pencil first, which is absolutely valid. You can definitely pencil in, use a very light, thin pencil. I would use an H pencil, not a B pencil. B is dark and uh, soft. You want hard and fine like H. Okay, Helen missed the beginning. 
my red and orange is very pigment rich. So I had a little puddle of water and then I just kept rubbing my dry paint with that little bit of water so that lots of pigment like molecules got into my water. That's how it's so thick. Um, I don't know if you saw the transparency example, Helen. These are the kind of background light applications. And then the flowers and leaves are more of a um, four or five transparency there. Just different levels of water. Do I want one more leaf? Yes. I'll do one more leaf. Mm -hmm. Do it kind of here. Just keeping it in line here. Half, half a leaf coming out here. Dark, light, whatever you like. So you can already see this one's drying where I put the yellow dabs in the middle and it's bleeding outward. I want to add, this is still a little wet here, I can still add a teeny bit of dark. All right, I'm going to add some stems to my, uh, first to my seed heads, which are drying nicely. They need stems. And uh, they're going to come out of the, the end that's not that little fishy tail shape, the other end. And these stems could be light green, dark green, any color. doesn't have to necessarily be the same color as the, as the seed head. And this guy, so um, the stems don't even go all the way down to the very bottom. This guy just kind of goes to here and then stops. I'm going to just angle this a little bit my way. Angle that and then down. And then we've run across a leaf here. I'm just going to skip over that. Maybe add a little bit more stem here. Could have it come down further and just kind of, I'll just let it end there. So if you come across anything in your way, just skip over it. Keep it going. And I haven't let the lines like a touch. Little gaps. Gaps are allowed. They are a necessity sometimes. Okay, who else needs a stem? So you need a stem and you're quite like curved over. I'm gonna kind of arch it like um like a candy cane? I guess like a candy cane. Oh we've got uh, Suzanne and Ellen having some sister time. I love that. I love it. Yeah, you can tune in from different cities. And then uh, after the event is done, you can uh, FaceTime each other and share the results. Or maybe you're uh, FaceTiming as you go. Uh, yes, Gail, the video will be forever on our Facebook page. So if you missed the beginning, it will be there. Um, or even if you were here for the beginning and maybe you're falling a little bit behind, you can catch up with the video later. Or maybe you got called away to do something mid-painting session. Where's my other guy? Oh, here's another guy. So wherever you chose to put your other little seed head, little big, big seed head. And curve it down. And you can see my lines aren't straight. They're not perfectly thin. Just, just the impression of a stem. Here's my curvy stems. Hmm. Um, I have this little like just barely starting to form little um, seed head. 
So we can make one of those, or two, or three. I'm gonna make them. A little extra interest, like a little mini. Like a little mini though. Like so. So maybe, maybe this one was just fertilized by a bee. The petals have fallen off. Nope. Switch the little of the red, but nope. as long as the red is dry, it shouldn't bleed into my stems. We're good. I'm gonna go stick here. Continue there. And yep, yeah, there's my little seed head stems. Yeah, Bonnie, you'll be able to watch the whole video right from the start. On Facebook, on the Artist Palette Demo Channel. Give us a like. Give us a like and a follow on Facebook, and then you'll see all the events pop up, all the videos. Um, we also do have a YouTube YouTube channel, um, and there's more free videos right there right now that you can do, which will also be there forever. Let's uh, add some more green stemmery. Um, so, you know, just like, it doesn't have to exactly match up with a particular flower. I mean, some of my flowers, I didn't even give it a green stem, I gave it a black Sharpie stem. No big deal. Just throw a few in there. So maybe if this guy had a stem, it would come right down in here. Just pretend. That's all I'm going to do for that one. And this guy, maybe he has a little stem coming down here. Uh, here, I'm just making it up as I go. Uh, this guy, a little stem here. Thick, thin, lumpy. Mm, and this guy, maybe it won't. I'm just gonna make stuff up. I'm making stuff up now. You can literally, if you just want to make a line in certain places, anywhere really, you make a line, fill in a gap. Do I want more? Not really. Yeah, so you are able to watch the entire video start to finish on Artist Palette Durham Region. And that should be posted fairly quickly after the event wraps. Eileen likes my thinking out loud. Excellent. <laughs> my kid is rustling around something, but he's trying to be sneaky about it. Just do what you need to do, girl. Okay, so we got stems, we got leaves, we got seed heads. We want that to dry a scooch. Uh, but in the meantime, uh, our poppies should be starting to get workable. So a little fanning, a little, uh, you could do a hair dryer, but it's really more about the paper absorbing it. So as much as I want to believe it'll be evaporation that does it for me. Ugh, blowing away my poppy. Stay there. And we'll do some uh, splatting after our Sharpie work, Sharpie fine tip pen work. Uh, yeah, let the, let the stems, let the leaves dry. While we are letting this dry, let's look at some upcoming events with me. Why not? So, um, this one is called Watercolor Hedgehog. Uh, we are going to do, here it is, Watercolor Hedgehog, uh, oh yeah, this Saturday, the 14th. 
and that one's in the afternoon. We're going to do that at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. So that is a paid event on Zoom. So when we do our Zoom uh, events, much smaller size classes, um, definitely a lot more one-on-one -on -one in terms of questions and answers. So that is a watercolor hedgehog. You can get your ticket at our website, Artist Palette Durham Region. We have Canada Mitts. It doesn't have to be Canada specifically. Uh, this one we're doing nearer to the end of November, uh, the 28th, November 28th. Uh, that's in the evening, 6 o'clock. Fun little silhouettes in there. Uh, and then, uh, and then we're getting into. Can you believe December's coming? December. And the C word, Christmas. Um, so December tenth, in preparation for Christmas season, we're gonna do some fun gift tags for like gifts and cards. So we'll be doing um, the Christmas tree images with watercolor paints, and then we will get some colored paper, cut those out, glue them on. Just kind of a little crafting session. So there's some uh, gift tag examples. You can make them smaller if you don't want your gift tags to be that big. Okay. Yeah, so we're going to do this one uh, December 10th, 6.30 at night. Um, that is a Thursday. Thursday the 10th. And you can mail those out. You can attach them to your gifts. And one more to show you, an upcoming free event. So just like this, we're going to do it on Facebook Live again. Um, and this one is, here it is, Watercolor Festival of Lights is what I titled it. Um, I kind of was going for holiday neutral with that one. So are they Christmas candles? Not really. Are they Hanukkah candles? Could be. Maybe does Kwanzaa use candles? Could be Kwanzaa candles. So just trying for a, a kind of a holiday neutral look with that one. That one we will be doing live, just like we're doing now. And that one is on December 28th. Oh, so it's a little bit after Christmas, but that's okay because it's holiday neutral. Could be for just winter. Just winter. So there's some upcoming events with me. Of course, there's loads of other paintings and events with our other hosts, um, drawing events with Karen. If you've never done any kind of pencil drawing sketches, Karen's great. Karen is a wizard with the pencil. Okay, uh, yes, yeah, some of these are definitely dry enough to work on. Wine break, been talking so much, need a wine break. Just a little bit of wetness. I might even take my magical paper towel. Let's see what happens. A little bit. Yeah, that just helps it a little. It like soaks it up a little. But maybe that's the poppy that I'll do. I'll leave that one last. You could do um, a number of these paintings with acrylic paints, just really water them down. And Claire asks, how long this class will be? Oh, let's see, what are we at? We're at 120, maybe about, maybe like 20 more minutes. Not too long, we're just doing drawing next and then a little splashing, but the splashing's fast. Um, so I've got just your basic Sharpie, regular tip. Uh, you could use a finer tip Sharpie a black pen, black pencil crayon, colored pencil. Uh, this is like a finer tip if you want that look, nice and fine. Um, you could, I guess you could even do this with a fine brush and using a uh, very opaque black watercolor. If that's all you have, you could do it with that. Or you can hold off on doing the line work and uh, next time you're at the store you can grab a black sharpie, black uh, 
All right, everyone's being so helpful. Everyone's helping out answer other people's questions. Love that. Yeah, the Facebook group is Watercolor Lovers. Uh, pretty sure you can get to it from the Artist Palette Durham Region Facebook page. All right, and then Liesl's shared it right there. Excellent. All right, get your Sharpie. <laughs> I'm just going to move this over here for a sec. I will need to do some splashes. And as you're drawing, you can move your paper um, to better accommodate your wrist, your hand. So I might rotate that around quite a bit. Well, let's see, that one's pretty dry. I'm going to start up here. So the middles, I first started off by drawing some very loose little, little circles. And then I kind of did lines coming out from that to be the black part of my poppy. And they're, they're not uniform, they're just kind of messy. And then when I do my petals, you'll see that I don't even really follow the, the shape of the paint petal that I did. This one kind of goes off, goes in. Kind of adds a funky, modern, fun look to it. Okay, so work on one that's dry. So this one's dry. I might do kind of rough, blobby circle shapes. Like that. And the black coming, it's kind of sprouting out from the middle. You can do that as heavy or as lightly as you like, really intensely it in or just kind of a little bit. Radiating out. It's not starting to look like what that traditional poppy where it would here he is. My little guy. I always lose at least at least one per per season. That's that's my second one. And then, yeah, the outline of the petal is very just free and whatever I feel like doing. Boop, there we go. Gotta loosen up, loosen that wrist. And yeah, sometimes I don't even connect it to the middle. Like that. Keep doing it. So that one's going kind of behind that one. So just skipped over that. Okay. Or I might even throw a few kind of like longer kind of sprouting out like this. Sure. That's it. That's all. We can do that for, for all of these that are dry. So those middle dotty blobby shapes. Four of those, five of those. Doesn't matter. Black coming outward. As much or as little as you like. And just go for it. And if you have any wet green nearby, just be mindful of any wet green stems you have. Barb says she was okay until she took out the Sharpie. I had a little wet patch right here, so I just went around the wet patch. That's the way around that. Give that one more time to dry. Same with right here. Wet patch. You can just kind of skirt by it and boop. There you go. And get here. Okay, there we go. Number two. This one dry. So 
Oh, look, there's a big indentation on that one. Right there, dent it in. Just making it up as I go. Oh, I didn't do this part. Hold it away from you. Look at your composition. Do you want more black in this one? Okay, so that's how I would do the, the ones that are facing you. Let's look at one that's kind of facing to the side. So you kind of just have to make up which petal would overlap another petal. So let's say this petal is like in the foreground, the one on top. This petal is underneath that petal. And then this is the third petal like that. So that's the one that's like on the back half. So here is where I put some black and a little sprouting. And I don't necessarily have to put those little roundy bits in the middle. Just a little bit of black there in the, the cup, the cup of it. The Carrie asked if the circles in the middle are filled in. Well, they are filled in with the red that's underneath it. So my circles end up not looking very circular because of all the lines that I'm doing. Some of them kind of overlap my little circles, so they end up being a bit blobby. Um, so the middle, I'm just using my black sharpie and going outward with a burst of lines coming from the middle, outward. Just black sharpie. Black sharpie, sprouting. Sprouting from the middle. Let's do this little bitty one. Same thing, pick, pick a side to be like the foreground petal. That one. There's another petal. That one's that one's the furthest petal, so the little black bit will be right up the middle here. A little bit. A hint, a hint of the middle, because, yeah, if this was your poppy and it was facing away, you'd see just a little bit of black peeking. A couple more to go. So this one's facing that way. Loose outline. Oh, this one dents way in. Sure. I made that one have a kind of a gouge in it. That happens. And put a little black in here. Oh, this one's facing kind of more downward. Um, let's go kind of like this. And then kind of make up my own petal here. I'm kind of just got to fudge it. There we go. Put a black. And that little cranny. What a lovely contrast with the red and the green. Complementary colors. Opposites on the color wheel, right? Is your complementary. <laughs> this is being recorded, Jan. It's being recorded, and the entire thing will be up on our Facebook page. No worries, Anne-Marie. It will be up. All right, so those are our flowers. Beautiful. So our seed heads, they are dry. Our stems and leaves, they are dry. Lovely. And again, very loose outline. See how my black is not even perfectly on my edge of my paint. Loose. Wild. So a little bit in, a little bit out. Big deal. Okay. Loose outline of my kind of fishy shape. And then for this, for this like kind of, I did a little squiggly 
thing down the side here. I don't know if it's a highlight necessarily or just some extra texture. Who knows what I was thinking. But we're going to put some dots on that one. We can do that. It's a loose outline of my seed head shape. A little, a little blobby texture down the side. And then, yeah, I even did some little dots. Because there's these little holes where the seeds come out. I can do that here too. Yeah, when you like shake these, little seeds come out like a little poppy seed shaker. And, um, oh, bring that again. Forgetting I moved him. We're on the home stretch, guys. Outlines and then splats. Everyone's been keeping up so well. Uh, some people do have to go. Yep. Mm -hmm. Linda, take care. And yeah, we can always watch the last bit of the video in the replay. So there's my seed heads. Uh, let's do some leaves. So I did kind of redraw the spine of my leaf with the Sharpie. Just loosely, it doesn't have to be perfect. Kind of thing. And then just loosely outline with zigzags the outline. And of course, doesn't match up does not have to perfectly match up with the paint. I just kind of did what I felt like doing. My wrist just does it. So you could do like a loose sort of shape, zigzag, there can be gaps. There we go. It looks a little messy up close, but no one looks at it that close. You're looking at it from afar. And that looks phenomenal. Let's do one. It's tough for some people to loosen up and you know maybe give away control. But that comes with practice. And here's one here, up the spine. Ziggy zaggy ziggy. Last one I did up there. Loose zigzag. I find if I hold my um, whatever implement I'm using, whether it's a paintbrush or a pen, further back, it kind of flows a little better. I've given up some of the control to, uh, I guess, friction really, how it runs on the page there. Versus if you want, you know, very steady lines, I would grab it right up close like that to do very steady lines. But we're letting go of the control. You're welcome to Robin. Why let his seed pods look like a wrapped candy? <laughs> oh, that's cute. You're welcome to Donna. You're welcome, Patricia. Oh, yeah, you can definitely share your creations, Nikki. Um, after the event, um, take a photo. You can share your photos on the event page. Um, after the video is posted, I'm sure you can add it in the comments. Uh, it just won't let you add a picture while the video is still going live. Now, the only thing left with the black is the kind of stems that kind of come down here. So I just kind of choose one side of the stem to uh, do my black line, and that's kind of like the shaded side. So if I imagine my sun, maybe it's coming from the top left, maybe the underside of this would have some black. I'm just going to continue that. Just making it up. Oh, this little guy needs a little, little outline, a little baby one. Like that, so the underside of this. I'm kind of doing the inner, the inner part of the hook of the bent bent rub it here rub it there rub it here here's a bit really at this point i'm just sticking to the left side 
just to be consistent. Underside of this, and down, down, down. Just a quick light swoop. There's a bit peeking there. And I even threw in just some black lines, just regular old black lines for more, more interest. There's some in there. There's one. There's one. Just a beacon. I can do some like that. Um, while I'm got while I have my mark in my hand, I'm gonna sign it. And then we'll get to some splashes. Those are fun. You're welcome to Michelle. Splashy time. Splashes are optional. So mine are reddish, orangish. Whoops, wrong in my light. Come back light. Some watery paint, load it in your brush. I'm using my bigger brush of the two, so it holds more holds more watery paint in it. A um, couple ways to do splashes. So I like to use my finger, and then I just kind of slam slam the paintbrush against my finger, and you can kind of aim it where you want it to go. So yeah, just go for it. I have a a tablecloth down. I recommend that, especially if you're at your mother-in-law's. I, I doubt that there's very many people at their mother-in-law's right now. They could be small, like that. Um, if you want kind of bigger ones, I've got some bigger ones. Come back here, you. Bigger ones. Um, what I do for those ones is I load up my brush with painty water. And from a height, like way up high, I'll literally squeeze. I will squeeze my fingers. Bloop! right there and it doesn't matter where they land if some of them land on the flowers beautiful will look so nice and they'll dry and do weird things as they dry so I'll go up high with painted water in my brush way up high drip drip them up high you could do some green drips too it doesn't have to just be red reddish orange Oh, I lost the camera. There we go. Even like I've got red on my hand, I could just kind of flick. And this look isn't for everybody. It's not for everybody. Some people don't like the, the drippies. Now, sometimes they even do drips of just water. So this kind of fun thing can happen if you just drip water and it'll kind of lift up the paint you had before and kind of spread out so see what water will do I just literally there's just water on my brush I can just shake it around see what will happen when that dries fun okay I look like I uh, like I've been doing something bad You can try this painting again uh, with different colors, different color flowers. Doesn't have to be a poppy. So there you go. You can see how my my two paintings turned out completely different. Yours at home will be completely different from mine, but that's what we want. We want all of the unique personalities to come out in our paintings. Yeah, practice makes perfect, guys. Uh, Wyletta says pods of hot water bottles. Nice. <laughs> You're welcome to Nora. You're welcome to Tanya. It is a good way to unwind. I love watercolors. I find they're very forgiving and you can kind of let loose. Get some of this. Everything has a little bit of red splatter on it. I even splattered the old painting with more splatters. Uh, yeah, so we're wrapping up. Uh, I do have a couple of tip options on this little card here if you are so inclined to send me a little of that green. I do appreciate that. It enables us to put on more free events for you guys. 
So uh, my email for an e-transfer is kristenartist at hotmail.com. Uh, my name is kind of spelt a, an unusual way, Chris10, like the number 10, Chris10. And uh, PayPal, paypal.me uh, slash kristenartist is the tip link for that. Jane says, first time she's painted anything since grade two. That is amazing. I would love to see how that turned out, Jane. Take a quick photo. You can add it to our event page. You can add it to our main page. Message us a photo. Uh, tag us. Tag us in a photo. We would love to see how things turned out. I love it. Yeah, so don't forget um, to uh, maybe join our Watercolor Lover Facebook group, and then you can see a lot more uh, tips, tricks, fundamental skills uh, taught by me. And don't forget, we also have a YouTube channel. Lots of free videos on there already posted months ago, last week. Free stuff. This has been a real pleasure, you guys. Thank you so, so much for joining me. I think this went rather well for my very first Facebook Live video, if I do say so myself. <laughs> All right, any, any last questions here? I can't wait for the next paint night, says Jean. Me too. Me too. Ruth says it is great and relaxing. Excellent. I hope everyone stays safe. Uh, if you are uh, going out to, you know, honor our veterans, uh, do so in a safe way. Uh, Jan asks how long that the replay will be available. Forever. Forever, Jan. Gotta finish up this wine. No problems there. You're welcome to Karen. Welcome, Diane. You're welcome, Barb. Thanks so much, guys. Yeah, if anyone has any last minute questions, fire away. Welcome, uh, Doreen. Marion says the splatter sure flies. It sure does. Now yeah, put down a cloth, newsprint, um, my laptop over here, Splatter City. Catalina's very first time. Excellent. I hope I presented it in a very beginner-friendly way. That's what I strive to do. You're welcome, Margaret. You're welcome, Arad. Okay, I hope we got to clean up. It's clean up time. If there's any kids out there following along, kids help mom and dad clean up. Don't just... Uh, Leave that to mom and dad, right? <laughs> okay, I'm going to sign off now. I look forward to seeing you guys again in another event, and uh, happy painting. Be safe.